have a little sip of coffee. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a Space Lace-esque kind of base house type of base. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to make it. So this is the sound we're trying to emulate. I'm gonna play a very small version or very small portion. Let's actually go ahead and take down the pitch a little bit to avoid getting copyrighted. So if you've heard that, you know definitely what the um, song it's from is uh, Dominate by Space Laces. So this is what I came up with. It's uh, fairly similar, kind of the same style, but I wasn't able to nail it exactly. So this is what it sounds like. So similar, not exact, but uh, kind of a close, I would say, replica of what we're trying to go for. Something that you could definitely take into uh, your own hands and try to make it a little bit more similar if you have that knowledge to do so. Um, so let's go ahead and walk through the serum preset. So for our base, we're using oscillator A with basic MG. We have our sub on, um, we're modulating the level on there. And then for our basic MG, we are having four unison here. Our detune is a little bit below halfway. Our blend, phase, and random are all at the same spot didn't move those and then we're using a uh, wavetable position getting modulated by lfo one so just about all the way at the start to maybe two thirds or three quarters and then bin minus just about the same but we're popping up the bin minus notch a little bit past zero so just scoot that one up a little bit more no noise here even though that we have a level being modulated that's off and then we're not using the oscillator B at all. I found that FMing for this sound specifically wasn't really the way to go, but I think a lot of the sound is coming from the filter. So we have the PP12 going here. Um, I don't know what PP is supposed to stand for. It doesn't sound great though. Oscillator A going here, and then we have an LFO modulating the cutoff here. So here we have maybe a third to two thirds, or maybe a quarter to three quarters, something like that. Our resonance is up maybe about 75% pan in the middle. We have drive, what is that, 26%, and then our frequency is being modulated from maybe a quarter or a, a third to three quarters or so. Just go ahead and try to copy that as close as possible. And then our mix is at 62%. Our LFO, we have this kind of sharp curve, and instead of it going all the way down and us getting some unwanted frequencies down at the bottom, I can actually show you what I mean by that. Where it kind of has that like wuh sound at the end. I just popped it up so we don't have to deal with that. And I also shorten the notes in the actual MIDI clip. Just to try to avoid some of that kind of wuh sound, it makes it sound a little bit less harsh, which we're going for the harshness. Um, sub oscillator is also going directly out. Moving to our FX, we have some hyper going here. No dimension in the actual patch, but we have five units in here. We're modulating the detune. We have the rate at 83%, and then our mix is being modulated from 30, say, to about 70 or so, maybe 80. Just trying to add some detune here to make the sound have a, a little bit more tonality like it does in the original track. EQ, we're just EQing at the lows here so we're not interfering with the sub bass that's in Serum. Usually I do it separately, um, but just for the sake of the video, we did it all together in the same actual Serum patch. And then for our last filter, we're using the um, LBH-12. We have our cutoff at 27 hertz and then that's going all the way up just to clean up the sound a little bit more. Again, without and then with. So you can hear it cleans up the sound, makes it a little bit less aggressive, but also tames it so it's not all over the place and messing with the other sounds in your song. That's all for Serum. If we move to our EQ, we're just taking out a little bit of mids. If I take this off and I put it back on, just cleaning up some of that low end kind of muddiness that we don't really need. Uh, again, most of the time I'm hoping you're using an extra sub to make sure that your levels are consistent across the board. But if you're not, uh, make sure you're cleaning up muddiness within. We're using a little bit of OTT here just to make sure that the high ends and the mids are kind of tamed. Um, the low end isn't as important in this actual OTT section again, because you should be using a separate sub, but if you need to kind of uh, take control of that, you can. <laughs> Maybe that even sounds a little bit better to process that, but then with the overdrive and the other effects after, it kind of diminishes the sub anyways. So for overdrive, we're just using a little bit to add some high in. We have our band here at 16.3 kilohertz with a kind of rating of 5.1, drive at 66, tone at 71, and then dynamics, we have 50% with our dry weight at 39, just adding some kind of distortion to the high end of the sound, but also introducing some more since we were lacking a little bit. 
I like to do overdrive in my sounds instead of white noise in the serum preset because I feel like the white noise can kind of get lost once you're adding a bunch of distortion. But at least with the overdrive, you have complete control with it just right here. So you can make the adjustments within the actual audio effect instead of having to dive into serum every single time you make a change. We're using a little bit of dimension expander. We have our drive wet in the middle and our size is just a little bit down. This is by X for record. So if you don't have it, it's free, download it. Um, but I'm sure you do at this point since it's been out for a while. And then we're using a little bit of saturator. Without the saturator, with the saturator, we're adding some more distortion with that. So we have our soft sign on, we have our drive at two decibels, output with the soft clip on, and then we're using 10.3 of the bass, and then the depth we have 4.95 didn't mess with the frequency or the width, but if yours is different for some reason, we have our frequency at one kilohertz and then our width is at 30%. And altogether, that's the sound. If you've been here before, we have some multiband compression and then just a deck buddy on the actual group, but the deck buddy isn't doing anything, just that multiband compression. And I believe that this is just the stock preset that loads into Ableton, which is right here. So hopefully that's a kind of good insight on maybe how he went about making the sound. I know it's not 100% exact, but it's similar. And I think that this sound would have been cool in the song as well, apart from the sound he already used. So if you learned something from today's video, let me know in the comments below. And if you know how to improve the sound, let me know as well, because I'd love to learn a little bit more about sound designing and how certain artists do it. But if you like the video, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you again on the next one.